Whoever is here, Father Lord God, I ask you to give them something that they're looking for, Father Lord God, so that their lives will be changed, Father Lord God. I ask you to step into this room tonight so that it's not only us worshiping, Father Lord God. I ask you to step into our hearts tonight, Father Lord Jesus. We thank you for this opportunity to worship you tonight, Father Lord God. I ask you to come down, Father Lord Jesus. I ask you to come listen to us worship you, Father Lord God. And as we start to sing to you and we start to praise you, Father Lord God, remove everything that is not of you right now, oh God, so that it is purely based on you, oh God. We thank you for your love, your mercy, your grace, Father Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We cry, consume, consume, consume. just by what we do day by day, but because of who he is, because of his power, because of what he is able to do, his grace, for what he is, we tell him thank you. And right now, while you're singing this song, I want you to look inside of you, to look what is not right of you so that right now, his holy fire is able to take it and burn it away out of your life. Whether it's whatever you're trying to stop doing, Ask him to take that right now while you are while you are worshiping him. Ask him to take out what is stopping you from being that person that you need to be for your family.
everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Give me you. Everything else can wait.
this is a prayer. A prayer telling him how amazing he is. A prayer telling him how much you need him. Si yo ya vivo Se gracia Sao se Praise God. Clap it up for the musicians. Clap it up for the musicians. Clap it up for the praise team one time. Clap it up for the brother Zeke. Clap it up for the big homie Jameis. Clap it up for the big homie Mike. Clap it up for the big homie Moses. As you see, sister, oh, my bad, brother J, sister Erica. And Sister Catherine, um, we want to thank you guys for continuing to rock with us. Uh, my name is Pastor Gabriel. I ask that you continue to pray for us um, in every way. As you can understand, it's a battle. And upon these grounds that which we are, you know, threading through, we find plenty of moments that you are looking for help. And, you know, the hand that which comes out to you could be a snake. And we had to learn these things the hard way. But uh, everything happens for a reason. As our brother, Pastor Sove, always says, there's no coincidences. Whether you folded on us or whether you, you know, showed us love. Whether you turned your back on us or you continue to support us. Everything happens for a reason. We thank you. We are grateful for every person that which has been with us, been a part of this journey throughout our whole, you know, existence. So at this moment, I want to let you guys know that as the Youth Believe Ministry, we are here to develop, we are here to help young men and young women find their way in life, to be comfortable serving God in a manner that which in this world, as we have found out, some call it lame, you know, some call serving God as if that's for old people. A lot of people look at serving God as if it's a retirement plan. But what we have come to find out is that serving God is the only way. So we're trying to get our young people to understand that if you don't serve God right now, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? So it's with great honor at this moment that we call up the young king, Brother Jay Era, Pastor Pierre-Louis, 
One time, y'all clap it up for him. Stand up, stand up, clap it up for him, clap it up for him. First time preacher. And I just pray that you guys actually pay attention. God bless, brother. Hey, all right, all right. <laughs> <Love it. laughs> hey, I'm not gonna, not gonna lie. Uh, the devil been playing with me all week, man. All week. Got in a car accident the other day. <sighs> Ambulance, all that. Uh, but God is good. God is good all the time. God is good. And, ooh, I never think I was gonna be up here preaching like this. Not J.R. But God does, God controls your destiny. Well, I control my destiny. Let me correct that. You know? But before I, I start, I want to, the song that touched me, I haven't heard it, I haven't sung it in a long time. Si yo te vivo, se grasa. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, si yo dia se grasa u se sa. Father, I ask you to come into this building right now, dear Heavenly Father. I ask you to bless the people that's in here and to bless the people that's watching, dear Heavenly Father. You know, we'll be watching on Saturday, dear Heavenly Father. I ask you to forgive us, to forgive all the things that we have done, Father. I ask you to help us understand, dear Heavenly Father, that you need space in our mind to maneuver, dear Heavenly Father. I ask you to bless the mouths that speak your word, God. I ask you to bless the people that learn your word, God. I ask you to come into this building and let the Holy Spirit flow through this building, God. I ask you to let the Holy Spirit come through this building and heal people that needs to heal, God. I ask you to let the Holy Spirit touch people that are about to receive this message, oh Lord God. I thank you for everything you have done, God, and everything that you're going to do, God. I ask you to fulfill my dreams, God, fulfill the purpose of life, God, fulfill my journey, God, and anything that you do, God, I'm right behind you, God, because you're my leader, God, and I'm the follower, God, and I'm proud to carry my cross and to follow you. In your holy name we pray, amen. All right, all right, all right. So I have a couple scriptures in this message, but my main scripture will be in Jeremiah 17, verse 10. So if you can open wherever you are, you can open your Bible or your Bible in your phone or your computer, and let's go into Jeremiah 17, verse 10. I'll give you guys like 30 seconds to do that. You know. All 
All right. So it says, but I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. And I'm going to say that one more time. But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. So before I start this sermon, when I was younger or when I was in middle school, I heard this say, it says, you can lead the horse to the water, but you can't make them drink it. So pastors and and preachers and worship leaders, they can lead you to church. They can lead you to God. They can pray for your deliverance, but they can't force you to use God as a helping hand in your life or in your journey. That's the decision you will have to make. So the title of my message is You Control Your Destiny. You control your destiny. You control your future. You control your peace of mind. You control everything in your life. I always tell people the God you see is the God you get. What I mean by that is like you can have two people praying for the same thing and get different results. And that's based on faith. So faith do play a role on your destiny. And you play, faith play a big role in your destiny and you play a big role in your faith. So, when I say that the God you see is the God you get, people don't realize when you hear somebody says, my God is my God, my God is awesome, my God is a God who, et cetera, et cetera, is because God blesses people differently. You understand? God blesses people upon their faith. God, like, would you go above and beyond for the Lord you serve? How much do you lean on God? You control where you go in life. Like, you control where you go in life. You control who you see. You control if you pray today. You control if you worship today. You control if you went to church on Sunday. You control if you went to Bible study. You control all these little things. People, what people don't realize is that we play a big role in our destiny. God we play a big role in helping God to create our destiny. God just don't wake up and be like, ah, oh, look at Brother JR. Let me, poof, let me bless him right now. Just for, just for nothing? Oh, I didn't pray today. Let me bless him right now. No, no, no. We play a big role in our destiny. We play a big role in helping God. And for God to create us, we play that, we play that big role. So, and I know that faith play a big role in our destiny too. I, I'm always, I love speaking about faith. I love speaking about the mind because faith controls everything. That's how I feel. Faith controls everything. Everything that you, you want to see God do, that's with faith. Faith, 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 faith. In the book of James, I'll say, uh, uh, in the book of James, See, you see the devil? I show you your papa. I show you. But in the book of James, chapter 2, verse 14, and et cetera, it says, faith without works is dead. Ah, meaning, let me, let me read what my, what my definition is. It says, meaning when you believe in miracles and healing and the way God changed things in your life, there's going to be a correlated action to your belief. What I mean by that is, you know, speak things into existence. What you believe can happen. What you see, what you, what you wish on your life will happen. You know when people be like, oh, man. Oh, a good thing, good thing. Oh, don't jinx me because it can really happen. It's not jinxing. It's because you believe that will happen. You believe that you're going to have a bad day at work. You believe that. God's going to bless you. You believe that God's going to move things in your life. You believe that God is going to change things around your life. God's going to stop you from going in circles and circles and circles. You believe that. That's why it says faith without works is dead. There's a corresponding action to your belief. So when there's a corresponding action to your belief, 
Of course, when you speak things into existence, it will happen. But without works, it's dead. Let me use this example because, you know, I'm, I used to be a football player. So an athlete, if you didn't go to training or practice, I promise you, you wasn't going nowhere. You probably wasn't going to get PT, playtime, for people that don't know what PT is, playtime on the field, or you probably wasn't going to make it to the next level, college, NFL, because you didn't put the work in. God sees the work. God don't see emotion where you cry, cry, cry all the time. No, he sees the work. He sees the work. Like, people don't realize that God is a God who do love. Yeah, of course. He loves. He loves. But he does not like people, how can I say this, that are draining. Draining. I'm going to say it like that, draining. What I mean by draining is that, yeah, you sit here and absorb everything of God. Like, you sit here and absorb everything. Like, okay, God, give me this. God, give me that. God, God, I need this. God, I need that. God, I need this. But where's the work? Where's the work that you are supposed to put in? Do you guys know that we are supposed to be out here really as, like, evangelists, speaking the word of God, trying to save other people? Where's the work? You're, you have to speak to people. You have to get to reach people. Save the people that don't know the word because we here know the knowledge, but we're so afraid to go to people because of pride, because of uh, 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 what you call it, who you are on Instagram. It, oh, I don't want to get to I don't want to get there. I don't want to get there. I don't want to get there. <laughs> Listen, there's a lot of people that's jeopardizing their destiny with the weight of life. And what I mean by that, we tend to try to do everything by ourselves. We tend to try to fix everything by ourselves. But we can't. You can't do it. You can't do it by yourself. Even though I say you control your destiny, but you can't do it by yourself. A lot of people try to control and reach and pursue their destiny without God. I promise you. It might look good now, but in the future it's crashing and burning. And I say this with the most respect. Without God, there's nothing. And what, I, what I mean by that, like, if you, you're jeopardizing your destiny, if you want God to move through you, if you want God to show you visions and, and show you what he needs to do, you got to clear your mind. You got to. That mind has to be clear. It has to be, there needs to be space for God to maneuver through your mind, so he can show you your destiny, so he can show you what he has planned for you. You understand what I'm saying? So he can, he can show you what he has planned for you. So Luke 8, 43 through 48. Remember that. I, I want y'all to remember that. I'm not going to go into that yet. I said it for a reason. Just listen, because the reason why I said it is because people are jeopardizing their destiny because of pride. People are jeopardizing. There's so much weight in people's life because of procrastination. I, I don't understand, right? They're so, and, and I was listening to a sermon, and the pastor said, God is not moved by emotions. He is moved by decisions. I took that, I swallowed that, I slept that, I ate, like, because it made me realize that you can go to the pulpit and cry and cry and cry and cry, but that you, you, don't, you never made that decision to move on. And I see that people that can't make this decision to move on are the people that says, when you go through a heartbreak, it takes time. No, no, no. You're the procrastination. The time is reflecting on you. You can't just, you, you're going to sit here and cry. You're going to God, God, why? God, why? God, why? God, why? He sees it. Trust me, he sees it. But he's not moved by emotions. He's moved by decisions. He's moved by make up your mind because you're hurting yourself. I'm trying to get to you, but your mind is so full. I'm trying to show you your destiny, but your mind is so full. From what? I don't know. When, now, listen to this. Luke 8, 
verse 43 through 48. Y'all remember, y'all gonna know the story. There's a woman, she probably was sick, bleeding for like 12 years. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna show you how she controlled her destiny. She was bleeding for 12 years. She heard that Jesus was coming through. I'm gonna speak it to you real. She heard Jesus was coming through. Jesus was like, Jesus was like, hey, man, let me come through. You know what I'm saying? Let me come through because I'm, I'm the man with the plan. I'm the man that's blessing. She knew that. She knew that. But look, she put her pride aside. She put everything she had aside. She put all that she had aside. Some people are afraid to, to get help from other people. Some people are afraid to ask. Like, they, they're not afraid to ask God for help, but they're afraid to help to get help from other people. When I tell you something, yes, you can ask God for help, but God uses his people to help you. So yeah, 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 that pride that you guys have, it has to be set aside. So she was bleeding for 12 years, went to, to the doctor, they gave medication. She was sick, 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 sick. So you know she did? She said, okay, I heard he's the man with the plan. Her faith, the, how much faith that she had, she had so much faith that she said, if she touch his garment, she'll be healed. So what she did, she didn't even wait. She didn't even wait. She, I'm talking about she pushing through the crowd. That's Jesus. The, the same way that this generation, the same way that people worship rappers, singers, uh, Instagram models, and all that to get to them when they're when they in the concert, she was pushing through. I'm talking about she was pushing through. She touched, she just gripped. Mm. He stopped. He said, oh, who just... Who just touched me? Who, and, 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 and the disciples are like, you don't see all these people here? Come on. There's a lot of people here. He's like, nah. The person that touched me, I felt my power go through and just, just saved her, just helped her. She came on her knees. Her knees. She said, I touched you. I touched you. She was healed. What, in 12 years? That the doctors couldn't find to help her. In 15 seconds, God just, whew, she was healed. Now, with that example, I'm saying she controlled her destiny. She made the decision to go touch his garment. Because she knew that if she touched his garment, she was going to be healed. There's a lot of you that's scared to touch God's garment. There's a lot of you that's scared to touch God's garment. And, don't, and I don't mean like physically touch God's garment because... God has, to me, I, I feel personally that God has given his people that are, that are going to save other people, his leaders that he has chosen, pastors, preachers, worship leaders, youth leaders, he has gave them a piece of his garment so people can touch on, so people can get saved. Some Christians are jeopardizing their destiny because they haven't seen any change in their life. Because they feel like it, that some certain things are still the same. Well, I was, I was listening to another sermon, and it's a quote from Dr. Darius. I don't know if you guys know who that is, but he said, God is a change specialist. And I'm like, oh, that, that's catchy. God is a change specialist. You know, me, all, all my fellas, I was thinking about 2K. You know, you got, you got the, the dunk specialist. You got the, you got the rebound specialist. You got all that. I was thinking about 2K. I'm like, oh, that's good. And then I was also thinking about uh, just like there's a lot of people that specialize in the, the area and their jobs and their career, God is a, special, a specialized person in my life. He's a he, he, specialist in healing, specialist in delivering, specialist in, 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 in blessing people, specialist in so much ways that where can he go wrong? He can't go wrong nowhere. God is, is amazing. Like God can literally just take my life and move it like it was never broken before. So people don't understand that God has to break you down to, to fix you up and change your life and show you that you was better than ever. Let me tell you something. Your history does not define your future, does not define your destiny. God moves in people. 
God moves through the mind, through the heart. But are you willing to make the decision? Like I said, you control your destiny, but you have to make the decision. Do you want to know God? How far are you want to go to the behind levels to get to know God? Would you sacrifice a couple of people to get to, get to, to, get to God? There's a lot of people that's, that's, that's jeopardizing their destiny because they're afraid to sacrifice a couple of people. A couple of people that are hurting them in their life, in their journey. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Jay, I, want, I hear you. I hear, I hear you, bro. Sis, I hear you. You want to change. I hear you. You have that potential. I hear you. But are you willing to make that decision? A couple things have to go so new things can arrive. I have a wonderful friend of mine. She, she left to the Army. Before she left, I had a conversation with her. You know, them RP will be getting crazy. I got a couple people down there too. And I told her, I told her straight up, I said, hey, you control your destiny. Like, you control what you do from now and then. Because you're away from people that know God a lot. So you went to another, another place that them people are very toxic. You got to make the decision. It's either you want to know God still. Wherever you are, not just, be, not just because you was around people that know God. Now that you're in a different area, you still have to get to know God to pursue your destiny. Because he has more than the army planned for you. I see that God love you. I pray. I see that God love you. He has something planned for you. But just because you was around your church people, you were pursuing. Now that you're away from your church people... Pursue him more. Pursue him more. Stay in that Bible. And if you can, preach to the other people that don't know God that's around you. Because, hey, them army people, I love them, but there's a lot of them that's missing God. So I have a couple of friends. I had to let go myself. And, you know, I love to, I love to relate with real life issues. When I speak or anything like that, I have a couple of friends I had to let go myself. They was hurting me because I was trying to pursue. I was trying to get to know God. I was trying to find my identity and, and pursue my destiny within God's, the way, what, what God wants me to do. But it was hurting me because they were still doing the same thing around me. And there were people that didn't want to know God. There were people that were doing things that I had no business doing as a child of God so one day I prayed to God and I said God why am I going in circles why can I not find my destiny why can I not know what you want me to do God he said there's a couple people that's around you that you have to sacrifice and let go I said God no I can't sacrifice that then I remembered that he picked up the cross he said he he sacrificed his son he sacrificed his son for us, for our lives. I know sometimes y'all think like, if God didn't sacrifice for us, where would we be right now? Y'all don't ever think about that. Like, where would we be? Where would we be at? Will we still be here? Will my name be Jameson? Will your name be Shella? Will your name be Pastor Gabe? Where would you be? You don't ever think about that? Where would you be? Proverbs 16, verse 3 says, commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. A lot of people are lack commitment. Commitment in relationships, dating-wise, marriage-wise, commitment in church, commitment in tide, commitment in praying, commitment in Bible study. A lot of people are on and off. They have that on and off switch. What I'm telling you today, remove that on and off switch. Keep it on. You know when you break something and it's on forever? Keep it on. Keep it on. Because that's what God wants to see. He wants to see commitment. He wants to see that you will sacrifice everything just to get a taste of him. Just to get that little garment. Now you healed. Now you blessed. People be like, man, Jay, I know I want to know God, but I feel like 
nothing been changing. I prayed. Something's changed, but some things are still the same. I said, hold up. Let me tell you, that's the devil that's playing with you right now, brother. The devil is telling you just because he changed this doesn't mean he can't change that. So now he's trying to walk up in your mind and tell you, nah, man, he changes that. He only could change something. But I'm here to tell you today that God is a change specialist, that you control your destiny because me, I wasn't all that. Look, look at me. I went through dirt. I went through rain. I went through, it, through, it, through hell. I'm not talking about hell. I'm talking about hell, the, the hard things that come down from the sky. I went through snow. I went through the forest. And God said, no. Nah, just keep on walking. I'm strengthening you. Through this battle, I'm strengthening you. So when you really get up, you up. So I took control of my destiny, and I removed people from my life. I took control of my destiny, and I started praying. I took control of my destiny, and I started reading my Bible. I took control of my destiny, and I started getting connected with godly people. See, this all ties back into you controlling your destiny to receive the future to receive the plans that God has made for you. Because remember, he already knew what we were going to do before we even knew. Since in the womb, we just have to make the decisions in life to get to them. Run to your destiny. See, a lot of people are, 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 are not, a lot of people are jeopardizing their destiny because of relationships. boyfriend and girlfriend because they knew him for so long. Marriages because <sighs> my parents love him and I don't know, he don't, he don't do godly things and all that stuff. But have you realized that when you're up, that's when people want to love, love you some more? And when you're down, that's when people be like, I'm going to catch you on the other side. They probably give you a little, a little hand. If they can't pick up your weight, they just drop it down. Have you realized when you're up, that's when people come to withdraw? Yeah. That's when people come to withdraw. And when I mean they come to withdraw, I mean they come to withdraw the love that you have, the happiness that you have, because they want some. They see that you're jolly. They see that you're happy. They want some because they want to be happy too. But, but that's when you start to get drained. Have you ever felt that you pour into so, too much people and they ain't pour nothing in you? People are jeopardizing their, dest their destiny because of that. Because of relationships that was been supposed to be broken off. God told you to leave. But you made the decision to stay. That's why he gave us free will. I see that. He gave us free will. Because he wants us to make the decision to love him. God made this decision for Jesus to go and save our lives. Sacrifice his to save our lives. He made that decision. And we can't make a little, a little decision, a little arrangement in our life just so we can pursue our destiny. God has a calling for everybody in his presence. He has a calling. But what are you going to do to find that calling? What are you going to do to find that identity? Are you going to sacrifice a couple of things? Are you going to give up a couple of things? Are you going to remove yourself from a couple of, couple of places? Are you going to remove that tox toxic people around you? Are you? Or are you just going to sit here and be like, I'm going to wait till God come and, and show me? Oh, he can't show you because your mind is too full. You got no space in your mind for God. You got no space in your life for God. You, you too tired to pray. You be too tired to come to Bible study. You be too tired to go to church. You work seven days because li what life what life has got, got you going through, so you have to work seven days, oh, seven days a week. That's called sacrifice. You got sacrifice. You got to sacrifice. If you don't sacrifice for God, you're not going over, beyond, over and beyond for him. See, our destiny play a big role with us. Some people don't know their destiny and just go do something they... They didn't want to do it, and they end up not happy. That's because God was never involved. When God's involved in your, in, in your life and what you go pursue and you pray about it, you become happy. You see, I'm, hey, you see God-fearing God doctors are happy. They're happy saving people's lives because why? They prayed about it. God helped them. 
God helped them take the steps to go to be the doctor they are today. And there's some doctors that, man, this is so stressing. This is like, bro, come, why am I doing this? Why am I doing that? Because God was never there. God didn't give you the permission. God was never, you, God was never with you. You didn't get that helping hand from God. You, could, you went to go do it by yourself. You know what I'm saying? You went to go do things by yourself. But, when, but God is a God where he will help you. But you got to put a hand in that fire with him. That's what he wants to see. You got to put a hand in that fire with him. He wants to see if you will sacrifice a couple of things just like he sacrificed his life for you. That's why I say speak things into existence. That's why I say your belief have a corresponding action with it. That's why I say that God is a God who is not moved by emotions. He's moved by decisions. That's why I say that faith without work is dead. You ever, try, you ever see somebody say, hey, I'm going to the gym. I'm about to lose dumb pounds today. I'm about to lose dumb pounds this year. But they're not putting it in that work. They look the same way they did last year. That's just the same way how God people look. I'm about to get, get closer to God. But you're doing the same thing you did last year. Ain't no work in that. You, God ain't moving in that. I was told before that there's some people that are, that, that are messed up <laughs> so many times. Like, we will ask for forgiveness for this and then we do it again. Ask for forgiveness for this and then do it again. Ask for forgiveness again and then do it again. And then one time pastor said, you know, God is the only boss that fires you and lets you keep on working. I took a pause. <laughs> I said, what? I said, hey, pastor, can you repeat that for me? He said, God is the only boss that fires you and keep you working. I said, what do you mean by that? <sighs> Let me tell you something. He said, you ever seen a, a prophet that just don't hit the same no more, but, people, but he, still is a, he still is a prophet? He don't got the Holy Spirit no more, but he's still a prophet. He's still in church preaching. He not anointing no more, but he's still a prophet. He lost his, his path to his destiny, but he's still preaching. But, but God already fired him a long time ago. Because God, God is a boss that fires you and keeps you working. Don't be that person. Don't be that person. That's why I say take control of your destiny. Because you really do control. Like, we have free will. Like, bro, I can get up today and be like, yo, should I pray or should I not pray? Should I go to work or should I not go to work? Should I take a shower today or should I? No, for, you can really just say that. Yo, should I do my hair or should I just cancel and tell them, yo, I'm going to come next week? Because you can make that decision. The same way you can make other decisions in your journey with Christ, you can make the decision to proceed forward. You can make the decision to take a pause. You could make a decision to step a couple Steps backwards, depending on the decision you make, depending on the moves you make. We need three things to fulfill our walk with Christ and fulfill our destiny with Christ. We need his person, that is Jesus. We need his power, the Holy Spirit, and we need his principle. We need those three things to fulfill our walk with Christ and, fulfill, and so he can fulfill our destinies. And what he has planned for us. Those three things will, let, will help you proceed forward and help you move forward. Those three things will show you who your friends are and who are not your friends. Those three things will show you who to take out your life and who to keep in your life. Those three things will clear your mind. But listen. One thing my coach always told me, 
you got to stay disciplined. God's our coach. We got to stay disciplined. It's like a game, you know? Is you going to win to the Super Bowl? Is you going to go to the finals? Or is you going to lose? Be disciplined because you control your destiny. That's why he gave us free will. We make this decision. Be disciplined on what you do. Be disciplined on who you talk to. Be disciplined of your mind because you control everything. Ain't nobody telling you, yo, Shellen, get up right now or I'm going to slap you. Nah. Ain't nobody telling you, yo, get up right now and go buy these shoes because you need them. Nah. Ain't nobody telling you, yo, I need food. I'm hungry. Go get that food right now. Nah. And if, you do, and, if, and if somebody is telling you that, you are making the decision to go do that. Ain't nobody, put, ain't nobody making that decision for you. Ah, I'm going to get up because he said he's hungry. I'm going to get up because he said I need the shoe. I'm going to get up because... Well, I'm here to tell you that stay disciplined. I'm here to tell you that you play a big role in your faith. And faith play a big role in your destiny. I'm here to tell you that I can lead you to God. But I can't make you know God. I can't make you love God. I can't make you use God. Like you ever met a person that is telling you, yo, use him? Have you ever met a man that you want to date and say, yo, come and use me. Take my money. Take my gold. Take my car. Crash it and come back and then come get another one. Have you ever met a man like that? I know you haven't met no man. You can't tell me you met a man like that. Crash the car again and come back and so he could buy you another car. Nah, ain't no man. Ain't no man like that. But God, God's like that. God is just like that. Walk up, in, walk up with God. I God forget you. Walk up, God, God, give me a, a, a car. When I mean a car, I mean the Holy Spirit. Crash the Holy Spirit down. Then he'd be like, I come back to him like, God, I'm sorry, I need it again. Boom, he blesses you with it again. Man, I don't want to get too far, but I, hey, you control your future. You control your peace of mind. You control your destiny. You control everything around you. I'm here to tell you that. Make the decision that will lead you to your destiny, that will let Christ fulfill what he has for you planned so he can fulfill the dreams that you have prayed to him. Let him fulfill it. But you got to make that decision if you want to do better or not. You got to make that decision if you want to pray or not. You got to make that decision if you want to be disciplined so you can learn about him, have some faith. You got to make that decision if you want to fast or not. Just make that decision. And you will see so much changes in your life. You'll be surprised. Man, God is good and God is always good. So I'm going to end with the verse I started with. And that's in Jeremiah 17, verse 10. And it says, But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. I'm going to read that one more time. But I, the Lord, search all hearts and examine secret motives. I give all people their due rewards according to what their actions deserve. I'm going to leave you with that. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Okay. Hello, everybody. Okay, so that was a wonderful word. Absolutely incredible. So if you could all just bow your heads and I'll close out tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, sometimes I get silent because I don't know what to say. You are absolutely indescribable. 
honestly, from everything that you do, from everything that you say, from your glorious works that we can read in the Bible and those to come, you are truly outmatched from your power, from your love, from your grace, from everything. God, I just pray that you touch the hearts of everyone watching this at home and those here today. And I just pray that you continue to walk with them, Lord, and remind them that they, they are never alone, that they never have to lift or carry any heavy load without you, Father, because you are the heavy lifter. And it is up to us to make that decision to call upon you and to ask for help when we know that we need it, to ask for help not because we don't want to be weak. No, in our weakness, you make us stronger, Father. Thank you so much, God. It is in your glorious name that we pray. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you guys for watching the Youth Believe Ministry. Stay tuned in. We got bigger things in plan. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Amen.